Aliens in the Attic is one of those movies you saw on TV quite a bit as a kid, but for some reason you don't remember a whole lot about it. And sometimes you feel an urge to go rewatch it, but then you immediately do a full 180 because it's a kid's movie and who has time for that? Well, don't worry, because I had time for that. So let's talk about it. You know, this movie came out in 2009 and uh, it didn't do well in theaters. That seems to be a pattern for a lot of these movies that get shown a lot on TV is that they didn't do well in theaters, which is probably why they try to force it on you. They try to force it on kids afterwards. The movie is about a bunch of kids fighting against some aliens in the attic to prevent catastrophe. The humans on the show are one big extended family broken up into two parts. Then there's also Ricky the boyfriend. So the extended family consists of five members on each side. The main character in the first family, his name is Tom. Tom is the guy whose story we follow the entire movie. He is our main character. Then the other half of the family, there is Elvis. The character's name is actually Jake, but the actor who plays the character also plays Elvis, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him Elvis to make him easy to remember. So everyone in this family sort of exists around those two characters. Tom, the main character, has his older sister, who's 17, played by Ashley Tisdale, and he also has a younger sister. Then he's got both his parents. Elvis has his dad, his grandmother, and his two younger brothers who are twins, so I'm gonna call them the Elvis twins. For the duration of this video, I'm going to refer to their extended family members in their relation to Tom and Elvis. So, Tom's older sister is gonna be called Tom's older sister, Elvis's grandma is gonna be called Elvis's grandma, and so on. There's only one other important human character in this movie, and he is Ricky the boyfriend. He is the boyfriend of Tom's older sister. So that's it. That is our main human core cast, 11 of them. I will tell you about the aliens when we get to the point in the story where they are introduced. So let's start the recap. The movie begins with Tom hacking his school's website to change his grades before his parents can check it. But unfortunately for him, he gets caught and his dad shows up and gives him a whole lecture about you know, working hard like his older sister. For some reason, Tom is upset over this, but whatever, teenage behavior, I guess. The next morning, they head over to their family's new vacation home. On the radio, there's a mention of a, a meteor shower that's going to happen soon. And Tom sees his older sister scrolling through pictures of her of her boyfriend Ricky. And for some reason he sounds like very jealous. Because he just very much dislikes the guy, even though he's never actually met him. The, uh, what, what, what are you seeing that guy? You know, that type of dialogue. After they reach the vacation mansion, they're met by the other half of the extended family. Uh, Elvis is half. And Elvis and Tom say hi to each other. And Tom brags about how he's now tall enough to touch a stop sign without jumping, which is just hooray short kings, I guess. So as the family is, is saying hi to each other and unpacking, Ricky the boyfriend shows up just out of nowhere in his, his nice yellow convertible. He really wants to stay the night so he can do the deed, plant the seed with Ashley Tisdale's character in a house containing nine of her family members. So he removes something from the engine of his car that prevents the car from starting. This pisses off Tom, the main character, of course, because, you know, his sister is his and his alone. So Elvis gives him a paintball gun in retaliation. They end up blasting Ricky in the nether regions several times. I guess to make sure he wouldn't get freaky with his older sister. But Tom's dad ends up becoming more upset with him over this, you know, coupled with his behavior the previous night of having terrible grades and trying to change it. After this event, the alien pods land in the attic during a storm. The storm is also affecting the TV, so Ricky the boyfriend volunteers to go up there with Tom to go fix the satellite. When the two of them reach the attic, Ricky reveals that he's pretending to be much younger than he actually is. Yep, Ricky is here to commit statutory in a house containing nine of the girl's family members. After Ricky the boyfriend pushes Tom onto the roof, Elvis somehow just shows up there as well. And we have our first encounter with the aliens. Now there are four aliens in this story. One of them is the commander, he is the guy in charge. Two of them are called Taser and Razor. They're the most physical, they're the uh, they're the combat specialists basically. Razor is a woman, she has very long nails, she likes to use them in combat. Taser is I guess the weapon specialist because he's the one who usually shoots the, the mind control weapons which we'll talk about in a second. And then there is Sparks. 
Sparks is the engineer. He's the one with the heart of gold that our main characters will end up befriending later. So once again, it's the commander, Taser and Razor. Taser is a man, Razor is a woman. And Sparks, the good guy. So Taser ends up shooting Ricky the boyfriend in the neck and starts controlling him like a video game. Elvis and Tom manage to throw him off the roof and escape with the help of Tom's younger sister and Elvis's younger twin brothers. They then lock the door behind them, trapping the aliens in the attic. Huh? Huh? You get it? Because it's called Aliens in the... Yeah! <laughs> the kids try calling the cops, but before they can fully explain the situation, the call gets cut off by the aliens. Shortly after, we learn that the mind control device only works on adults because Tom and Elvis both get hit by the device but it, it doesn't work on them. Which means that only the kids stand a chance in this fight. They decide to spy on the aliens and find out they might be looking for something that is in the basement of the house. So Elvis and the twins decide that a full on assault is the best way to, to overcome the problem I guess. They get hit with an anti-gravity device and my favorite lines in the movie are said by the twins which is, they turned off the gravity like in Halo. And then the other twin says, this is an Xbox, it's real, like weed. I still don't know what that's supposed to mean, but uh, <laughs> they said it. Tom and his little sister go up to help them, and they end up retrieving the remote that controls Ricky, which leads to some phenomenal physical acting by Robert Hoffman, the guy playing Ricky. The way he was moving the whole movie when he was being controlled is pretty impressive, honestly. However, when the kids release him from the mic control device, You'd think he'd be in some serious pain. I mean, he fell off a roof. But nah, he's more concerned about the damage to his car. Which he caused. With his body. The kids decide to turn on the heater to stop the aliens from leaving through the air vents. And this leads to a fight between Tom and his dad. During this fight, Tom reveals that he failed his classes on purpose because he wants to be a cool guy not a smart nerd like his dad. Because God forbid you have the ability to think critically in high stress situations and outsmart people who are more mature and experienced than you. Nah, 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 who would want that? I, he just, we wanna be cool. I just wanna be cool, dad. Uh, you don't, you don't understand. By the way, this kind of presents a weird plot hole because if he failed on purpose because he wants to be cool, why was he trying to change his grades by hacking the school website last second? So anyways, after this fight, Tom decides it's time to get rid of the parents so they don't get in the way anymore. They do this by faking an emergency with their real estate company, I think. So all the adults leave except for Elvis's grandmother. Sparks the engineer alien ends up falling through the vents and meeting Tom's little sister. She takes pity on him after noticing how pathetic he is and decides to befriend him. She then introduces him to the rest of the kids and Sparks the alien tells them all that the device they're looking for is buried under the basement. Meanwhile, the other aliens take control of Elvis's grandmother and try to use her to retrieve Sparks from the kids. Just as the police officer who the kids talked to earlier shows up at their front door. In the ensuing fight, the kids win. They capture the alien commander and the remote that controls grandma. Then their parents return home and they converge at the front door with the cop and the kids. So everyone is at the front door except for Taser and Razor, the aliens, and also Elvis. The parents then decide to invite the cop to stay for dinner. Meanwhile, Elvis tries to stop Taser from shooting the cop in the neck with a mind control device. He succeeds, but Taser and Razor end up capturing him. Then they take him down to the basement so they can start digging. During dinner, the alien commander ends up escaping the box they put him in and he retrieves a remote that controls Ricky, then uses Ricky to also collect Sparks the alien. The commander taunts the kids by telling them there's an invasion coming, then he threatens their lives. The kids retaliate by using Grandma to fight her Ricky the boyfriend. This leads to an epic showdown in which Grandma jumps like Jordan and does flips that would put Simone Biles to shame. 
During the fight, Grandma wins and is able to knock out Ricky's control device. As this happens, Tom's older sister walks in and she finally finds out about the alien's existence because this whole time in the story she sort of just been existing in her own storyline with uh, boy troubles with Ricky and not understanding why he's so on and off with her. So she decides to join the kids and help them fight the aliens. They head down to the basement only to find Ricky and Elvis there. And Elvis tells them that the aliens are done digging out the device and they are now all outside. Ricky the boyfriend wakes up confused after, you know, all the events that have happened to him with him constantly blacking out and coming to and getting into a fight with an old lady. Tom's older sister tells him about the alien invasion. He doesn't believe her and he insults her family. So Tom's older sister decides to break up with him. And that's the end of that relationship. Then the final showdown begins. The kids make a bunch of Mentos, Coca-Cola bombs, and then rush the aliens. During the fight, they end up knocking the commander into the device, which turns the commander into a giant. The now giant commander sends a beacon into the sky, which begins the arrival of their fleet. Meanwhile, Tom comes up with a plan to shoot the commander in the neck with his own mind control device. He succeeds just as Taser the alien also makes himself big. The kids then use the commander to fight Taser, while Sparks reverses the device's effects, making them both small again. They destroy the machine while Taser and Razor retreat. Sparks then tells the invaders to retreat because the machine is destroyed and they've been outsmarted by the humans. With the fight over, the kids say goodbye to Sparky and he returns home to his own family. Tom makes up with his dad, telling him that he wants to be a smart kid. Being cool doesn't matter, being smart is where it's at. And like, you should have been smart enough to know that already. And everyone goes fishing the next day. Then we see the commander get captured by a bird, so he's probably dead. During the credits, Tom and his older sister replant the mind control device on Ricky the boyfriend and use it to embarrass him in front of his new girlfriend, Annie. And that is how the movie ends. It's a happy ending for all. Very short, very interesting, pretty fun and fast-paced story, honestly. However, there are some plot things that I want to talk about. Taser the alien is incredibly sexist towards Razor. Like, just straight up, oh, you're good at that. For a woman. Like, things like that. He says it several times in this movie but she ends up falling for him anyway, which is a really weird lesson to put in the kids movie. Hell, she even rescues him at the end of the movie. She leaves behind the commander. There's also another major plot hole. After Tom's older sister breaks up with Ricky the boyfriend, he goes to leave the house, but then Tom reveals that he has the thing from his engine that he took out to stop his car from starting, which means that Ricky the boyfriend can't leave the house. So how did he not see the giant fight versus giant aliens and alien spaceships in the sky at the end of the movie? How was he not there for any of that? Like he should have at least seen that happening or heard it because he wouldn't have gotten very far on foot. He should also be in a hospital if not dead from all his injuries. Same with grandma. I mean, grandma was doing backflips up staircases. How is she alive? And she's like, oh, my back hasn't felt this good in ages. No, 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 no. Your back is broken, Grandma. Your back is done for. Unless the mind control device is freaking super soldier serum as well. It just makes you Captain America. Nah, now you're done for, Grandma. It's over for you. The cop character, I don't remember the actor's name. I've seen him in a lot of comedy stuff. He's in Space Force, uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I see him in a lot of guest roles. I've never seen him as a main character. But his role in this movie just feels like they needed a black person in there because he doesn't actually do anything. He doesn't contribute to the plot very much at all. You could cut him out of the story and the movie would still be the exact same. It just feels like they realized, okay, we've got we've got 11 main human characters in this movie. They are all white. Uh, we need one black person. We can't make R Ricky the boyfriend black because he's a bad guy. So let's just add a, a random cop, you know, throw him in there and say we met our quota. I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying that's how it feels because he's a he, the character doesn't need to be there. He's just kind of there to make a few jokes and that's it. The effects in this movie for 2009 are not great. Especially when characters like physically interact with things. The shading, the textures of the aliens don't really match the environment a lot of the time. Especially when it's an environment that's also inhabited by humans. 
because 2009 wasn't that long ago, right? For special effects, there were good, great special effects from that time. So it's it's good, but it's not fantastic. It doesn't feel like you can reach out and touch them. And that is all I have to say about this movie. It was a nice walk down memory lane, and I hope that uh, you enjoyed watching this video and me talking about the movie that I'm sure you've probably seen. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.